What is up everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Ikaruga. Today we are going to be finishing the game off with chapters 4 and 5. Chapter 4 starts off pretty much hell for leather. Let's see if I can get this right up. Uh, no. The retaliation bullets got me. There's a right way to do that section and a wrong way. I did it the wrong way. That... This stage starts off hell for leather. Within seconds, it's going to become an order of magnitude harder. Several, even. This part is absolutely brutal. And I'm not being sarcastic just because it starts off like this. There. Now you can start to see why this is hellish. This is not only, for sure, the hardest part of the game, it's also one of the longest single sections. What's worse is that while you're in this, just scratching and clawing to survive, it feels like you're stuck in some kind of time bubble. It feels like you won't ever, it, it won't ever end. Uh, I'm doing my best for the beginning part of this section just to take shelter. That strategy has pretty much run its course. I now have to really be careful. Oh. Still, though, this is going a little bit more smooth than this section normally goes for me. Oh, God. Don't get hit by stupid stray bullets. Can't afford that. Okay, now we have a very, very brief break in the action. The lasers are about to start up again. And from here, it pretty much just gets harder. Careful, careful, careful. Luckily, like in most shmups, your hitbox is not your entire ship. It's a small section right in the middle of the cockpit. Eh. You also get uh, some invincibility frames after you respawn. Damn it, I, did I run into the bullet or did I run into the rotating plate on the satellite? Oh, now it's all falling apart. Hold on. I'm gonna shut up for a second and just focus on not dying. Oh. Okay, I'm pretty much out of danger now. Alright. So, oh shit, that was the wrong position. Everything about this section is just so, so hellishly difficult. Oh man. I have to finish this fight before it drags on any longer. This, oh man. This is a really, really hard fight to regain your composure on. Once you lose sight of the pattern, it, it just becomes like this visual mess. Uh, wh when you are in a good rhythm on that fight, when you have the rhythm down for it and you're following the pattern properly, it's easy enough to keep that rhythm up, but once you lose it, holy shit, does that fight go downhill. What I was trying to do, I was trying to set up for a quick kill on it. And there's one very particular spot on screen, on either side, depending on which polarity you are, where you can start the fight off from, and you pretty much just have to go from right to left after that point, uh, following the, uh, the pathway that you get in the lasers back there. And if you do everything right, you can kill the boss in just that one repetition. Not even a repetition, just going right to left. But if you're in the incorrect position on screen, it becomes a lot, lot, lot harder. In fact, you start the fight off dying like I did. Oh, I've gotten myself into a really stupid position with this. Ah, oh, that wasted so much time. Like everything else, there's obviously a much quicker way to do that fight. Uh, positioning, you know, tends to be pretty important. Okay, but anyway, that's the end of the hardest section in the game. And the section that makes this level so brutal. Coming up is the boss, which itself is much, much, much easier than pretty much everything else in this level. However, I'm gonna try something on the boss, which is really 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 insanely hard to pull off and it makes the fight go by very quickly if done right but 
very difficult to pull off. So there's two ways to do this fight. The way you're supposed to do it and the way I'm gonna do it. The way you're meant to do it is you're supposed to hide in these little indents on the, in the wall and move from safe spot to safe spot by going through the alternating colored lasers, which just killed me. Uh, the boss changes his position. He doesn't just rotate, but he also rotates the screen around you. Uh, he comes closer and goes farther from you. So you're meant to go from safe spot to safe spot and wait for him to rotate one of his three weak spots around after you hit a weak spot enough. Three layers of shielding uh, peel back and you can start to damage his core from that point. What I'm going to try to do is peel back all those sheets on one weak spot. Here it goes. I'll explain what I'm doing in a moment. This is... Uh, oh! Oh! Almost! I almost did that perfectly! Ah, oh, man, right at the end it goes wrong. Okay, so... The way that I was trying to do that, the way I almost successfully pulled that off, actually, was uh, I was hanging out inside of the boss and waiting for him to start firing his laser from one of his weak spots at me. What makes that really hard to do is his... For starters, his hurt box when you're inside of him, it's huge. It's much, much bigger than it looks. So you have, right off the bat, not a lot of margin for error when you're inside of him. So you have to be very, very careful moving around and rotating with the boss. And then he starts pushing you to the wall with that laser. So by then, you're not only rotating your ship to follow the boss carefully, but you're also having to compensate for the constant pushback from the laser all while mashing the bomb. It's pretty sick. Uh, and while I'm explaining that, I'm getting killed by this section. Ugh. Jesus. Yeah, chapters four and five are no joke. Okay. Uh, these... This section of chapter five, or most of chapter five, really, uh, they're just opportunities for you to, uh, to fill up your meter over and over again, really. And build up your score. Chapter 5, aside from the boss, is really not that bad. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple compared to Chapter 4. We're already at the final boss. Uh, the final boss, well... Let's just say he has three forms. That's ah, screw it. Uh, this isn't properly the final boss. We have three forms of this guy to go through, and then we will get to the proper final boss. Uh, the first form is probably the easiest. It's the most straightforward to dodge all of his attacks in. Might die once or twice here, but it won't be that big of a deal. Shift now. Alright. Oh, oh, oh. I tempted fate one too many times there. Got a little bit greedy. This section, you don't have to do all that much moving around, and you don't have to do all that much polarity shifting either. It's just when you have to shift polarities and when you have to move, it has to be very well timed and very precise. This is probably his hardest form. So we have two centipedes trailing uh, different colored lasers behind them. And there is no memorization that will get you through this part, really. It's all reactions, and my reactions are not on point right now. I'm gonna try my best to take one out at a time and make this fight go as quick as possible, or this phase. Ooh. Not pretty. This is not pretty at all. I should go blue. Alright, I... Oh, I wasn't looking at his health. I thought that last path would be enough to get me through. Okay, and now we have uh, tennis. Pretty much all this fight is, is a big tennis match with bullets flying across the screen. So he's got fire lasers that home in on you. You absorb them. It completely fills your bomb gauge, your unleash gauge. You fire back and switch polarities. The pattern never changes, it's always white, black, white, black, white, black. Just alternating every time. I'm paying way too much attention to the bullets are, that are on screen. I kinda need to just take a leap of faith with dodging the bullets. Yeah, that's going much more smoothly now. 
Yeah, first I was paying too much attention to all the other stuff and getting distracted and not switching polarity in time. This is a very repetitious fight. It's not any less intense for being so repetitious, though. And that is it for the three forms of that boss. But, of course, we have one more fight left. This battle report is a false finish. You think that this is going to pop up and you're either going to get the credits or go to another stage select. But no, we have the power of the gods, a.k.a. the stone-like. And in this fight, you cannot fire. You cannot take any active aggression on. You can only dodge. This first phase of the fight is not that bad. Uh, this fight, this phase isn't too bad either. Oop, gotta be careful though. This is where it starts to get very difficult. I think the timer up there is starting off at what, 50 or 60 seconds? You pretty much just have to straight up survive this fight for the entire length of the fight. Uh, this is not too bad. You're just, again, all, it, all of this fight is is just being very, very careful. I don't know why I say that, as if that's some special property of this boss. Be careful on, on the final boss, but every other boss in the game, nah, just go nuts. Um, yeah, there's no real way to describe it. You just have to watch the patterns and react properly. But that's it. That is the final boss, the stone-like boss, aka the power of the gods, defeated. So as this final scene plays out, I guess I will briefly go through the story. So the backstory for the game. Years ago, a guy named Horai found this hidden ancient power and led a group known as the Divine Ones. And with this power, he pretty much conquered the world. A resistance group sprang up and they were subsequently wiped out, with the exception of our hero Shinra. He gets shot out of the sky at one point and lands in a town known as Ikaruga. And the townspeople look after him, and they give him a ship which is modified so that it can uh, it can switch polarities. Basically, they give him this ship, and it's named after the town. Ikaruga, by the way, and Genke, uh, Genki are both named after Japanese birds, which both feature white and black segments. So the other ship that I was just talking about, Genki, is piloted by Shinra's partner who once worked for the Divine Ones as an assassin. Um, after that little bit of backstory, it's all present tense, all the events of the game uh, we just saw unfold, which is pretty much just making it through all of Horai's pilots and ships and infil infiltrating the country, which shares the same name as the Conqueror, the country of Horai. The final boss there was the power of the gods that Horai found. And upon sacrificing yourself, Shinra supposedly reaches some higher plane, uh, assumed to be Nirvana. This is all, by the way, a huge callback to the plot of Radiant Silver Gun, including a direct reference to the stone-like artifact that's uncovered at the beginning of Radiant Silver Gun's story. There's some really cool ties to Buddhism in there, too, actually. For starters, the names of the five levels, Ideal, Trial, Faith, Reality, and uh, Metapsychosis is a reference to either the five skandhas or the five or five parts of the Eightfold Path. Ideal can fit with correct view and correct intention, uh, which are the first two points on the Eightfold Path. Uh, the five skandhas, Matter, Sensation, Perception, uh, Impulse, and Consciousness are probably more likely matches to uh, the level names and a lot of other naming conventions like that that aren't even really explicit or clear without the background information you only get in the game's manual, like names of certain enemies. Uh, there's also another really cool way to read into the game in the polarity mechanic and the ability to beat the game as a pacifist, and that is you can treat the game as a metaphor for the duality between uh, pacifism and extreme aggression. Whether or not there's a point to all of the metaphors, I don't, I don't really know. I just thought I would bring all that up because story and shmups tends to get glossed over and ignored. And I think Ikaruga kind of has 
at least some really interesting themes that don't get talked about all that much. But that's pretty much it for Ikaruga. It's short but sweet, it's incredibly tight, incredibly focused, and it's one in a very, very long line of masterpieces from Treasure. Treasure, I haven't talked too much about them. They're a group who split off from Konami's internal development team. They're one of my favorite developers. They just consistently hit it out of the park every time they come up to bat. Like, if you go back and look through their library, the number of just incredible games that they have pumped out is astounding. Gunstar Hero, Ikaruga, Sin and Punishment, Dynamite Heady, Alien Soldier, Radiant Silver Gun, Bangayo. Oh, and it would be a little bit unfair to give all of the credit for Ikaruga to Treasure. There was another studio who were contracted to do a lot of the work on Ikaruga, actually. Over the game's uh, lengthy two-year development cycle, the stu a studio by the name of G-Rev. Also, a something a little bit odd about the way Ikaruga was released. Ikaruga first came out in the arcades, and it was later ported in 2002 to the Dreamcast, which doesn't sound all that odd until you consider that the Dreamcast was officially discontinued like a year prior to that, in early 2001. But that is about all I have to say for Ikaruga, and that is about all the time I have anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was incredibly intense. Definitely the hardest game that I have LP'd on the channel. Trying to commentate over that was really, really difficult. Uh, so now, with that rather short but sweet game out of the way, we will move on to winding down with another game that is in my top 10 games of all time. The next LP that's going up is going to be Silent Hill 3. Look forward to the beginning of that sometime this week. For now, though, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.